uh, Sanitarium. Really pleasure, honor to work with you today. Hello, I'm uh, Professor Anthony Chiu. I'm here at CU, at Department of Surgery. Hi. Hello. Right, okay, it's exactly 5.30. Okay. Being a good student, we are punctual in time. Punctual, <laughs> punctual. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I hope this uh, very quickly put together uh, webinar is what you would like to hear from us because we know a lot of parents uh, have a lot of questions to want to ask and to learn from Professor Lau as well. I, let me apologize. If it doesn't run very smoothly, please excuse us because it's really put up together in two or three days yes, and yes. with limited support. <laughs> but I hope it'll be okay. So let me introduce our guest speaker, uh, Professor Lau, to all of you. So all of you have probably seen him before on the television for last year or so. He's the chair professor of University of Hong Kong, specialized in community child health. He is a member of the WHO Technical Advisory Group for Immunization and Vaccine Preventable Diseases. Uh, as you know, he is currently the member of the advisory panel on COVID-19 vaccine for Hong Kong SAR government. For your information, he was the chair of the scientific committee and has done so much work for the kids in Hong Kong on the vaccine prevention disease over the years, for many, many years, and pilot management. So a warm welcome him. We're really grateful to Professor Lau to agree to speak to us to, to today. So, Just very quickly, after I know that uh, around the world, something is happening. I would call this a tsunami. If you look at this slide, isn't it? Mm. Uh, over 358 million people. And suddenly, recently, there's a lot of case. But I guess the good news is the number of deaths has not fallen up. So I think we might be in this comfort, slight comfort, so to speak. Um, that this, this, uh, this Omicron is not as fatal as before, but never mind, it's still a very serious illness. We should not downplay it. Just to let you know, the, around the world, as you see in US, the numbers just shot up. This is about one, close to one million cases a day. Uh, but luckily, the death rate has, not, has gone up a bit, but not all that much. UK may have seems to con the corner, the, the number of cases coming down. Uh, but so the death rate is not actually rising. Well. The Hong Kong, we now see this the same wave. Uh, we've been predicting that no one around the world can prevent it from empathy. So this is a challenge we're faced with. What can we do about it? Now, we are most grateful to Professor Lau for sharing his understanding and his extensive experience in this matter and his views on this. But it's, I think it's appropriate for me to say that, uh, as you know, COVID is so different. And there are so many different views by different KOLs in Hong Kong and around the world. So I, would, I think the main point for us is to let you know more about what is going on the COVID so that you can make an informed consent yourself. So that's the problem. So without further ado, let me just say to you that we have Q, Q, uh, Q and A at the end. So if you'd like to ask questions, please type in the chat box. We'll be looking at it and raise a question for you if you would like to. If you would like to ask the question yourself, please put your name at the end as well, because we'll call you up. And uh, also I would like to uh, welcome Ms. Lo. She's uh, right here with us. So if any uh, parents have questions for the school, uh, I'm sure Ms. Lo will be very uh, happy to answer them. Okay, let me also introduce- Yeah, I'll try my best. Yeah, <laughs> let me introduce our other co-host co co as, well, as well. Simon, say hello. Yes, hi, uh, this is Simon Tan, class of 92. Uh, pleasure to be here. Yes, uh, um, I am also uh, class of 92, uh, Anthony Teo. So uh, I think we've been working quite hard in the health uh, medical chapter of the SOBA um, in previous webinars as well. So hopefully this, this webinar will be helpful to uh, all the parents of our DBSPD. Okay. So we we'll welcome Professor Lau now. I have actually let you have a share screen. So maybe you can take over the screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, so first of all, I'm most grateful to all of you uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to share some of my uh, most recent views on uh, COVID-19 vaccination uh, in young children. And I'm most grateful to Ms. Lo, uh, the head of uh, this very wonderful, prestigious school, uh, to brief uh, the parents uh, on this very critical issue now, must be really in, in, in the front of the mind of uh, most parents with uh, young children. 
So uh, in fact, I won't have too many slides. I would have eight in total. Uh, basically what I wish uh, to present uh, will be what I've learned uh, over the last two years, obviously from reading wonderful papers from colleagues all over the world, uh, as well as, as some of the studies uh, we've uh, performed uh, in Hong Kong. And of course, um, I focus on children. So this is the study we have uh, started early last year, what we call COVA, and now we extend it to become COVAC. So that is COVID-19 vaccination in adolescents, uh, because initially we focus on the secondary school uh, population. So we are more or less uh, finished uh, that study in terms of the those two one month uh, response. So we are just writing up, in fact, I was really going through all the tables and graphs. But obviously I already mentioned uh, the vaccination will uh, gradually extend down the age uh, to now to the primary school. Uh, so I have uh, extended this study to primary school children uh, sometime towards uh, the end of last year, I think it's Q4. So I've been uh, with many of my members, I've been vaccinating three to 11 year old uh, children, uh, basically uh, because at that time uh, we think uh, CoronaVac um, may be the choice uh, for this group. So we have been experimenting uh, with two ways of giving it, giving it either inside the skin, so what we call intradermal uh, versus intramuscular. And the reason why we want to explore this route is uh, from our secondary school study, we actually understand the antibody response uh, after vaccination comparing the BioNTech and the CoronaVac, there's no doubt, uh, BioNTech is superior in eliciting uh, antibody response. Obviously, we have studied not only just the spike, which is the most frequently tested in private sector. Uh, we also went through the whole gamut of the various kinds of measurements, including the plaque reduction. That is uh, how it actually neutralized the real virus uh, in the lab uh, and so on. So uh, besides the serological, that is the antibody response, we also look at the T cell response. So from our adolescent study, uh, we are actually going through all the data point right now and uh, found the T cell response to what we call the spike, which I think most of the parents might understand that is the protein outside the virus. And that is what the BioNTech, the mRNA vaccine is really focusing on. While the inactivated form, that is the CoronaVac actually contained the whole virus, but that's been inactivated. And therefore, because of the other components that is not present in the BioNTech, which is the other uh, structural proteins, that means these are the proteins that make up the virus. Inside the virus, there's a protein called nucleocapsid. So you do not need to understand the name, but just saying it's like um, a, a television set. And obviously there are many components. Uh, so basically the CoronaVac is a whole TV thrown in. While uh, the BioNTech is really peeling off the most important part that cover that television set. And therefore we found the CoronaVac because of the other extra components, they actually able to induce T cells. Uh, to some of this uh, protein, that is the nucleocapsid. So that is the opening gamut. Now, obviously, uh, we have recruited nearly eight, I think it's close to eight to 900 adolescents, children, and adults. So, uh, and, and uh, basically, I've been with all these wonderful people uh, for the last 10 months uh, going to the Ablei Zhao uh, CDC. And of course, that has been given back to the government, and we moved to Glen Eagles uh, Hospital and carrying on the good work. And the coming weekend, I'll still go there and finish off my recruitment of the primary school uh, children I've just uh, mentioned. But of course, I really need to thank someone that is our research nurse, the PhD MBBS student, as a medical student who took years off uh, to do research with me and Jaime and many other people. And of course, you know, there's Dr. Tong and other people. Now, Obviously, what's in your mind is whether I've got a young child, whether I should let him or her to get vaccinated or not. The really very clear message is yes, you should. 
um, in a way that because now with the Omicron, and this is the site where you could go into yourself called I will in data. These are no secret. It's actually updated every day. Uh, the Johns Hopkins uh, providing all the support and you could actually go to the various countries and look at their sort of a current situation. And that is the current situation in Chile in January, 2022. And you may not know 80% of the primary doses of COVID vaccine are Coronavac because Sinovac company has a very long cooperation with Chile and therefore they have got access to the Coronavac. So 80% of the first two doses in Chilean citizens actually got Coronavac. And the 20% left would receive either AstraZeneca or the BioNTech that we are very familiar with in Hong Kong. All right. And then, of course, they went on to have the third dose. And the third dose, the Chilean government actually allowed them to make a free choice. So they could go for Coronavac or BioNTech or AstraZeneca, which is of another platform. It is not an mRNA, it's not an activated, it's an adenoviral vector vaccine. All right. So what they have done is in the first week or so of January, because Omicron is also rising up in Chile. So, and I particularly really just took out the 71 years old to 80 years old, all right? Because you, in this website, you could click all ages and then all, all different age group. And you could see for the old folks, not vaccinated or not fully vaccinated, that is only one dose, out of 100,000 people, 21 died. If you have two doses, it dropped from 21 to 3.5. So that's a drop of over one eighth. If you had the third dose, it go right down. So if you compare this with the 21.766, it's more than a, you know 20 fold reduction. So obviously in Hong Kong, if any of the parents sitting there listening to me, and you have you know your own parents or your you know parent in laws and not got vaccinated yet. So that is my first major message to you. Please see whether uh, they should get vaccinated or not. Because contraindication to vaccination with one or the other COVID vaccine in Hong Kong is far and few between. I reckon over 99% of our population have no contraindication to receive these two uh, COVID vaccines. The doctors have been too cautious and I have been too cautious but that is rightly so at the beginning of the rollout of the vaccine. But now we have accumulated so much experience. In Hong Kong, we have given out over 10 million doses already. So any of the so-called allergic sort of contraindication is no longer there. And Americans are really revising uh, their guideline, like allergy to food, uh, to drug, and so on, they are not contraindications. Even if they've got allergic reaction to those one, it doesn't necessarily mean they cannot receive those two. So my first message is we have far, far too cautious and therefore really fuming the vaccine hesitancy, especially in the elderly. Now, I put in all ages now, so it's to be fair, because children, when they get COVID, they're usually mild, that doesn't mean they don't get sick because a very tiny minority who got complication, like what we call Miss C, that is an inflammatory condition. Of course, that is not as common as in the West for the East Asians, but it could occur. And of course, it's all number games. If you've got large enough of children got infected or at the same time, then there'll be a few of them would get quite ill, got admitted to hospital, and some of them might even die. And that's what's actually happening in America because their vaccination is very patchy, fairly good in sort of along the coastline and in Northern states, but in the Southern states, especially in the underprivileged, they are very poorly vaccinated. And a lot of children obviously has not got the vaccination yet. So of course, for all ages, then it's not as bad as the elderly because the major risk factor for deaths, for fatality, for deaths after COVID is age. So every five years in advancing your age, your risk will go up. 
So obviously, I belong to the high risk uh, group myself, but of course, not as high as those uh, over 80 years of age. So of course, when you put everyone together, you dilute down from 21 to 3. But you could see it still work all the way down. That is nearly only 1 over 30 if you got the third dose. So the message too is that if anyone who has not got vaccinated, please, if you're eligible, go ahead and get your first and the second dose. If you're already eligible, your third dose, you go ahead and get your third dose. There's really no doubt in my mind. You should go for it. And therefore, you yourself will be protected from deaths and serious illnesses. And of course, some of you might have listened to my Wong Ga Shi. So in the Omicron age, whether you get two or three doses of either BioNTech or CoronaVac, you will get you will get infected at the end of the day uh, with Omicron uh, because the neutralizing antibody elicited by the two vaccines, both of them more or less are useless after two doses. Even after the third dose of BioNTech, it will not last no more than a couple of months and then it disappear. So therefore. My third message is do not get frustrated or disappointed that you still got infected. So the whole point of getting vaccination is not to stop the infection with Omicron because it's not possible. It is to stop you when you get infected, you get serious illness, getting into the hospital, you need the oxygen, you need to go into what we call an intensive care unit and might even need to be put on a breathing machine, we call a ventilator, and you might even die. But having the two or three doses of either of the two vaccines will protect you very powerfully against severe disease, as shown by these two slides from Chile. All right, so that is the, for the CoronaVac as a primary two doses. But CoronaVac, in my mind, should have three doses to achieve the primary full vaccination versus two doses of uh, beyond that. Now, I will show you the real world data from America, but of course, in our world in data, I could not get more recent data than October. So that will not be Omicron era. It will be, I suppose, Delta era. So it's the same. This is for all, for all age, right? So unvaccination, uh, if you could remember the CoronaVac in Chile, the unvaccinated and partially vaccinated is also about three per 100,000 people going vaccinated would die uh, for that period of time, right? It is a rolling sort of a, a, a data. And if you look at the Pfizer, two doses down to 0.48. Uh, of course, it's not got a third dose. For third dose, I'm quite sure it would drop further down. So it's, it's really good in preventing death. There's no doubt about it. So even if you got infected, it will prevent you from dying. Now, this is my uh, second last slide because the choice uh, sort of in front of the parents now listening to me uh, will be whether first, whether you want to get vaccinated or not for your child. So my, my answer to you is a resounding yes, you should opt for vaccination, all right? And of course, then the second question is whether you want uh, your child to have CoronaVac or BioNTech, all right? And I listed on this table comparing the two because as I've mentioned early on last year, uh, my position is very clear. Having a choice is better than no choice. Second, we should be open, transparent, up-to-date, real-time information, and to educate our citizens in the clearest way we can so they can understand what are the pros and the cons in choosing the vaccines. Now, for BioNTech, maybe you have read from a newspaper uh, the formulation, uh, what, we, what do you mean by formulation? That means that it's the product that is manufactured by the company. Then in that bottle is called a formulation. And because in BioNTech, they have different formulation for the adults, for young adolescents down to you know, 12. And then for the 5 to 11, they have a specific, what we call a pediatric formulation. All right, so in Hong Kong, we have got no access to pediatric formulation. So in desperation, uh, the government agreed to what we call off-label use, using the adult formulation 
and taking out one third of the dose. Because in America, the pediatric formulation is one third of the adult dose, but they have a special bottle. They have different stabilizers uh, for the pediatric use. So of course the pediatric formulation is now used in USA because that's where it's made. And of course Israel, because they have entered a very, uh, sort of uh, very early on they have a contract uh, with Pfizer to get everything first in the world, right? So that is what is the formulation. Regarding Coronavac, the formulation is exactly the same uh, as the adult for the five to 11 year old. That means uh, there will be no uh, special arrangement and it will be much easier uh, to get that dose for the child, all right? Both of them, at the moment, the government allowed two doses, not like those over 18, they need uh, three doses. There are some reasons behind it because children, uh, they do not have to get as severe the disease as the elderly, as the adults. So perhaps uh, the two doses may be enough as long as they do not have very severe pediatric illnesses like cancer, like sort of renal, that is kidney disease that they need to be uh, what we call dialysis or have a kidney transplant, then they will need three doses, right? And then I just to explain the time interval between the two doses for BioNTech, it's a three months. That used to be 21 days. And some of you might remember uh, in Hong Kong, uh, sometime last year, when we started the two doses given to the young adolescents, 21 days apart, we found out they got what we call myocarditis very frequently, much more than what's reported in America. And it occurred in young males after second dose. And the rate was as high as one in 2,800 doses, much higher than that reported in America by the authority in America. And we reckon in America, they have been under-reporting. However, don't worry, all the cases actually recover uh, the, my, from the myocarditis, but of course they still need to be uh, followed. So no, uh, cases in Hong Kong actually uh, have very sort of a prolonged serious uh, illnesses. And up to date, there are over 100 cases of myocarditis after beyond tech, and about half of them are in the adolescents. And then about the other half is in the younger uh, population, but not as old as 49. So the risk actually exists right through the age uh, to about 39 or even 49 mostly men, males, all right? We don't understand why males or men are more affected. However, for Coronavac, uh, the way to give it is exactly the same as adult two doses, 28 days apart, all right? Because of the very traditional platform. So in terms of what we call reaction after BioNTech and after Coronavac is very clear, BioNTech had more reactions in terms of fever, muscle pain, headache, need to take you know, what we call Panadol or Paracetamol than those who, 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 who took uh, Coronavac because we've got data and the whole world's got sort of more or less the same data as well. So it's exactly the same as allowed. Okay, so in Hong Kong, we use off-label use because we think there should be a choice uh, for the parents. So the off-label use mean we take a while from the adult formulation in an adult formulation, one while, you could get six doses. But since for the pediatric use is one third, so theoretically for one while you can get 18 doses, but of course that is too dangerous because you can't puncture the cap of your vial 18 times and hoping the rubber could still stand. So now the government will need to have what we call a standard operating procedure for the pharmacies to be trained to get that one third dose from the adult formulation very accurately. And that SOP has been circulated to us uh, just this afternoon, all right? So that's why BioNTech cannot be given outside the three vaccination sites uh, right now because they need highly trained people. So make sure when you take out the 0 0.1 mil instead of the 0 0.3 mil for adult could be taken out very accurately, all right? So make sure it's not 
getting more than 0 0.1 mil and not less than 0 0.1 mil, right? Versus CoronaVac, since it's really the same as the adult formulation, and we have already over millions and millions of doses given in Hong Kong already, so there's no special training. So it can be given uh, in you know, the, the ordinary CVC uh, by private doctors uh, in uh, over a thousand uh, practices already joined it, I think. And of course, the government will be very confident to send out the school outreach team to give the CoronaVac because CoronaVac need no storage in very cold environment while beyond that need to be stored in minus 70. And once it's taken out and then diluted and so on, uh, it only keep at a room temperature a few hours and you have to give it. So that is the, 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 the kind of differences. Now, in terms of a safety, I already mentioned the myocarditis must be very high in your mind because I think um, Dr. Guan and Patrick Yip and, and Yin uh, from the Hong Kong U, uh, as well as from PMH, already highlighted this uh, myocarditis. So I just affirm, yes, uh, beyond has been associated with myocarditis, especially in the young males I've mentioned to you. But they all recover, all right? But of course, they need uh, sort of long term follow up. While in CoronaVac, um, in terms of the number of doses given for five to 11 years old worldwide, mainly in mainland Chile and uh, Indonesia, Turkey, and so on, uh, the safety data did not show any myocarditis. And the same uh, conclusion was made uh, when Ian Wong and Mike Wan and, 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 and Patrick Yip uh, yesterday, uh, I've, I, I think I read uh, from the newspapers, again, there's no myocarditis associated with CoronaVac. So if you are mindful of safety, and that is the data for you. Now, every one of you heard so much about antibody, 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 especially neutralizing antibody. And I've already told you, there's no doubt BioNTech elicited much higher neutralizing antibody than CoronaVac. So I've got data to show three doses of CoronaVac is just approaching the two doses, but still not as good as the BioNTech. So that may be of some advantage during the pre-Omicron era, because those vaccines are targeted not to Omicron, but to the ancestral ones. But Omicron has moved on uh, to change the spike so much. So the neutralizing antibody elicited by the current BioNTech and CoronaVac cannot recognize the change, the spike that well. To the extent that uh, you know, uh, they are either useless or even after the third dose, they would kick up a bit, but they should and I think would disappear very rapidly within a couple of months because that's what antibody is. Antibodies is akin to your cash, you use a cash and it's gone, right? Now we move, and but that, those are important uh, immunity to stop the infection, but in fact, coronavirus cannot be stopped. And antibodies always wane with time, always decrease with time. Now, of course you have heard, perhaps in Hong Kong must be one of the societies that heard about T-cells, <laughs> much more than many other societies. And of course, now the community doing all the research uh, would understand uh, why, uh, say, beyond tech, uh, although the neutralizing tide has gone down so much, but they're still protecting them from severe disease, it's really because of the T cell. And the same for CoronaVac uh, as well. So you remember, I've used a television set. So since uh, BioNTech has only got the outer coat of the television set, that is the S, and then the BioNTech uh, would only produce S specific T cell. All right, CoronaVac, we have data to show uh, the other lesson, not five to 11, but you know, 11 to 17, they produce comparable S specific T cells. But I've already told you another protein called nucleocapsid inside the television set that is present in CoronaVac, but not in BioNTech, of course, logically, because it's not there, therefore, beyond tech recipients will not produce the N specific T cell, while the CoronaVac recipients would produce the N uh, specific T cells. Not only N, we've got what we call them M, that is the membrane uh, as well. So when you add up all the S, the M, and the N specific T cells, CoronaVac is better than the beyond tech. So one up, one down, one up, and one down. All right, so there's in, in the whole world, you, you cannot get everything good on one side. So there must be the two sides of the story. Now, I already told you whether you got two or three doses, uh, you will get Omicron in time, all right? 
So after the third dose of BioNTech, your neutralizing antibody will be kicked up uh, to a level that might sort of prevent uh, infection in about no more than 70%. But, but in sort of two months time, it dropped to really less than 20%. And, and the theta is very low. So that's why in a newspaper, you've read whether you get two or three doses of BioNTech, you still get Omicron and the same for CoronaVac uh, as well. So do not have the delusion that we can stop Omicron infection or transmission. We might be able to reduce it, but we cannot stop it. However, for both vaccines, they are very good in preventing once infected, you get severe disease. So in my mind, choose one that fits your purpose, and then you get vaccinated. Now, that is my last slide. So this is about you know, uh, the adolescent attitude. This survey was done uh, nearly a year ago now. At that time, uh, the vaccine wasn't approved for the adolescents yet. And of course, the sample size is quite reasonable, over 3,000. And of course, at that time, only 30% are willing to get vaccination. But now you understand with all the education, with all the risk benefit assessment or the knowledge accrued by the parents and the secondary school students. Uh, I think yesterday we already got 83% of the secondary school age population already got a vaccination. All right. So I would expect the rest of the whatever 10, 20%, more or less, all of them, uh, of course, not everyone will get vaccinated uh, as well. So at that time, only 30% want to get vaccinated, 30, uh, 70% did not want. And the major concern is the safety. And then the second is whether it's going to be of use or not. While for that 30% who want to get vaccination, that is, I think it's um, April, I think, or May, um, they're worried to be infected, so they're quite rightly so. And then they want to protect their family. And of course, they want, just like all of us, want to return to a normalcy. Uh, but of course, there will be a change world. There will be a new normalcy. It will not be the old normalcy. Well, I think I have finished. And I, I, I've been a bit long-winded. At first, I thought it's 15 minutes. My God, it's only you're already half an hour. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You can release your screen share. Then we can have everyone on the on the oh. picture again. Oh, I'll stop sharing. Okay. Wow, great. And now we can see everyone. In fact, that's 233 of you on Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you. I'm most grateful. Yeah. So 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 grateful of you, Professor Lau, for giving us a to me is I, I always <coughs> admire the pediatrician. You have a way to explain things that we out that uh, doctors <laughs> cannot do so. Yeah, you have a way to talk to people. But anyway, I think no, I earlier I shared to you, I think the there were five W and one H that everyone wants to know. Why do we need to do it? What this is all about? What a choice? When should we do it? Who should have got it? Is anyone should not have it? I think we will raise some questions. And where can we have it? And how do we have it? Right. Before we open the Q&S and my co-host to share that, can we invite Ms. Lowe to maybe, since we've got so many parents here, to share with us the situation as the school has been instructed by Education Bureau or what is the plan. I know you have sent out a letter asking the parents to indicate their wish or indication. So we welcome Ms. Lowe to share with us uh, how we're going to move forward. Um, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Professor Lau, for sharing your insight, your understanding about um, the COVID um, vaccination for children. And then uh, because uh, we got uh, two um, circulars or memorandum from the EDB last week, so I it's our obligation or the responsibility to pass the information we got from the EDB to parents as soon as possible. Uh, so uh, on Monday, we issued uh, the circular. So it's uh, a, actually a um, survey, a survey to uh, find out how many parents uh, uh, you will indicate uh, uh, to give consent for your boy to get vaccinated. 
Now, so uh, uh, initially we we'll try to find out the number first, uh, see if we will be able to provide some sort of uh, school outreach vaccination service, uh, so that uh, parents will will be maybe uh, uh, more willing to put your child in a well uh, safer, more familiar school environment for the vaccination. Or anyway, there will be another option for beyond tech, definitely you have to bring a child to those uh, vaccination center to get the, in, uh, in, uh, the, the, the vaccination. And then, uh, so that will be some arrangement that we are preparing. Now, so we, we've got some guidelines from the EDB. Now, if we will be able to have like more than 150 uh, participants for the vaccination service, so we'll contact EDB. And then uh, we will we'll also be issuing another circular to those parents who indicate uh, that uh, you, you would like to have uh, your child have the vaccination, uh, most likely after the Chinese New Year holidays. Then initially we will um, have, we've, we've uh, tentatively set uh, the first dose, the date for the first dose in March, and then the second dose in May. That is uh, after, after uh, Easter holiday. So anyway, now uh, uh, we'll send the information uh, step by step when we have more information from uh, EDP and also getting the feedback from parents. Um, um, we will be arranging the cover playground as the venue for the uh, school uh, outreach so that it will be uh, well ventilated, will provide a lot of staff members. And maybe we also recruit some parent volunteers who have medical background to back up so that I will try to uh, arrange the site and then to provide a, um, have a good environment so that parents will be able to have a peace of mind while you accompany your boys to come to school to have the vaccination if you opt for that. I think it's an initial information that we can provide. Um, I can guarantee every information we get from the EDB, I'll pass on to parents as soon as possible. Now, the Chinese New Year is approaching, and then if we have information, we also will be uh, sending you uh, the update uh, through like um, our e-class with messages. Now, so uh, parents, if you have anything, then uh, through the PTA, let us know. We'll try to respond as soon as possible. I think that's um, what in, I can inform parents in the meantime. Uh, should you have other further questions, please feel free to ask me later on in the q and session. Thank you, Ms. Dr. Lai. Well, thank you very much. I hope our transmission is okay because we're testing our new system in the DBS. So I know that uh, we were told that the sound transmission may not be as good. So uh, I'm speaking closer to the mic now. Uh, well, I can see Samson O, the chairman of PTA here. Would you like to say hello or, or raise any question for us? You can switch your mic on. Okay. Then we'll open the Q&A. Okay. Uh, I think the talk is very informative. Um, and I've given some hints how to select the, which vaccine the, uh, the parents can choose. Uh, from, as my kids already have, uh, have dosage already, so uh, because they're the secondary boys, but uh, for primary uh, students, um, I would like to know uh, some. Uh, so any suggestion? Um, I, I know the uh, Sinovac is uh, coronavirus is uh, less reaction, and than BioNTech. Uh, but is it better to have a, a in injection at the at the arm or the leg, and see which have less e reaction? Have, do you have any idea? Okay, um, the injection site is not actually based on solid evidence. It is based on uh, Professor Yun's expert opinion. Uh, after he has studied BioNTech in, in an animal model, he demonstrated that BioNTech would cause very bad myocarditis in those animals uh, if that is given so directly into the bloodstream, right? Uh, after one dose, after second dose is really terrible. And therefore, he is of the opinion if it is further away from the heart, in the thigh, then before they get into the bloodstream, then it might be filtered off by the lymph node. So that is his expert opinion. So it's not based on evidence in human study. All right. Mm -hmm. So 
In order to provide choice to our citizens, the scientific committee agree. If parents prefer for the BioNTech to be given on the thigh, you go ahead. If you prefer to be given on the arm, go ahead. But for CoronaVac or the Sinovac product, there's no need. Because I've told you already, over 100 million doses have been given to this age category, five to 11. There's no safety signal, no safety signal at all. And there's no myocarditis. And that is a fact. And that fact was supported by a very careful study conducted by Professor Ian Wong, which is a population-based, what we call a surveillance study of the millions and millions of doses of CoronaVac given in Hong Kong as compared to BioNTech. And BioNTech definitely caused myocarditis, mainly in the males, very high in the young male adolescents, 12 to 17, but also caused myocarditis in the young male adults all the way up to even 39, I think maybe even 49 years of age. But that increase is not as high as in the young adolescents. So it's the pediatricians that alerted the government uh, on the myocarditis uh, because uh, we had a very good group headed by Mike Wan and Patrick and, and so on. So once we've got a young boy or young girl with chest pain, they will get very thorough investigation. Everything is arranged. As I speak now, in fact, that group have another report of another adolescent who had the first dose of BioNTech had myocarditis. So that is a fact. So they would get myocarditis even after one dose, but much more so after two doses. So I think this is so important information and I keep iterating it. Of course, it's rare, but you know, it's about perception. If you think one in 2,800, yeah, it's rare. Yeah, of course it's rare. That means you have to do 2,800 doses before you see one after those two, all right? But when you talk about the benefits of COVID vaccine in children uh, because of the severity of the disease once they got infected, it's not as high as old people or adults, then the safety issue is becoming even more important as compared to the adults. So I, I hope I've made it myself clear, uh, Samson. <laughs> Let me have to yes, thank you, thank you. focus. Oh, you see, Samson. I'm like, it's been a long time. Clear, clear. Okay, okay. We can change the German language. Okay, okay. 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 啊，又是用 Sinovac， 誒、啊，唔係用 Corovac 啦，唔係用 Corovac 係冇嘅，係 Biontech 先有嘅，係冇嘅，嚇。咁呢個係你哋要知道選擇。咁當然你話啊，嗰、那個低風險啲嘅效力係咪咁大咧？咁呢個大家要平衡呢樣嘢啦。呢個就全世界呢個呢個面對嘅問題。但係呢個資料係好重要嘅，同埋我哋見到好多啲細路咧，我哋香港好小心，全部請曬佢入廠啊，所謂即係即係 check 過曬之後咧。都現時都冇見到有啲特別大嘅問題，即係全部過咗過期嘅，誒過過 time time frame 咧都 recover 嘅啦。所以依個好重要資料。頭先我哋點啲 address one issue 啦，咁亦都好多問題。咁我會俾咧好 host 開始問，亦都有人舉咗手，我哋會請你哋去問嘅。我都想跟進下呢個馬卡達。Professor， 可唔可以同啲家長講一講個 percentage 大概有幾多啊？會唔會話一個 percent 啊，定係少嘅一個 percent 啊，定係少？頭先講咗啦，如果係男仔。頭先我都講咗啦，十二歲到十七歲打第二針之後咧，你打到二千八百個男仔咧，就有一個有 myocarditis。myocarditis 咧叫心肌炎，即係你個肌肉會發炎。咁肌肉發炎當然有好多衍生嘅問題啦。咁嗰個症狀咧就會胸口會痛啦，呼吸會困難啦，同埋個心率會會唔正常啦，會跳得好快啦。咁通常咧就係打完針之後嘅一個星期十日，但係我哋都見過係遠到去幾個星期之後嘅。咁當然而家全部喺香港嗰一百幾宗啦嚇，我就當然我哋知道細路仔嗰啲咧都有復原嘅。咁但係因為個心臟肌肉發炎咧
唔係一個小事情嚟噶嘛，係個大事情嚟噶嘛。咁所以我哋心臟科同事咧都極度小心，要佢哋有咗心肌炎之後咧，跟住嗰三到六個月咧都唔應該做任何運動。咁然後再去 check 佢哋究竟個心臟復原咗未？咁心肌炎喺美國就都唔少，係講緊幾千宗心肌炎嘅，咁都有死亡嘅個案。咁嗰啲就好少好少啦。你諗下，美國打到幾多億針，咁啊死一個、兩個、三個，誒、呃、咁樣樣。咁咧就唔係淨止 Beyond Tech 嘅 ，Moderna 都係 mRNA 都有死亡嘅報導。咁我咧就唔想淡化呢一樣嘢，我淨係又唔想話話好危險唔好打，我淨係想講翻啲數字，等每個人都會知道，因為。呢、这個心肌炎嘅問題，我舊年四月嗰陣時第一次喺嗰個委員會睇到，哦點解會心跳咁快嘅打完 Beyond Tech， 咁我就 flag up 咗嘅。咁後來先至再過多一兩個月咧，啲數據喺以色列，跟住喺美國嘅軍隊裏邊咧，先至有報零星嘅個案。咁去到六七月嗰陣時咧，都唔係好大件事。到後邊，咁我哋自己開始打嗰陣時，咁我估算用美國嗰個發病率咧。全香港所有嗰啲中學生打曬咧，都唔應該多過十三宗。但我未夠兩三個星期打第二針，已經見到二十宗、三十宗、四十宗、五十宗，我梗係驚啦。即係美國人係錯嘅，佢哋係漏咗好多嘅，好對唔住，好對唔住。因為美國嗰個 healthcare system 係冇香港咁好。香香港真係一個比較困混嘅社會嚟嘅。美國有啲好多窮嘅，或者佢 pandemic 嗰陣時根本就冇能力去照顧呢班咁嘅。好啊，有啲少少收，如果收翻到幾日就會好翻㗎啦。因為我哋都好多題目入緊嚟啦。咁 Simon， 你會問下一條題目。不如我哋 summarize 啲題目啦。好啊，好啊。有啲誒家長就問誒、呃，其實喺細路仔可唔可以誒、呃、打即係誒 alternate 咁打咧？即係打 dose of 誒 sinovac， 跟住打 dose of biotech。哦，咁得意啊 ！All right， 嗱，我咧。就好均真嘅，咁譬如你其實如果 coronavirus 咧，你打兩針啦，因為嗰個就基本餐嚟嘅，打到第三針咧就都唔錯噶啦，因為誒、呃、我諗而家國家嘅層面就全部都打三針噶啦，細路仔仲未，咁香港咧十八歲以上全部都打三針，因為嗰個咧就係、是、用翻我哋以前好多經驗都係呢個滅活平台，譬如而家你細路仔會打呢個 polio 啊，即係小兒麻痹，咁嗰個就係滅活平台咁。你 B B 嗰陣時已經打三針啦，你到呢一歲又打針啦，十八歲又打針啦，小一又打針啦，到小六又打針，係打六針嘅。咁<笑>所以呢啲係要即係舊嘅平台咧，就係、是、要慢慢嚟嘅，即係好似你去燉一樣嘢係慢慢燉嘅。咁 Beyond Tech 咧，好似如果有家長係炒餸嘅，就個個都猛火都嚇死你，嘭嘭聲嘅，咁啊炒兩下就搞掂。咁 Beyond Tech 你慢慢燉，你咪燉六次咯。我唔知道其他家長明明，我真唔想用嗰啲醫學名詞，你哋真係唔係好明嘅。b e y o n d t e c h 就大火去炒，炒兩兜兜兩下就搞掂。Okay. Coronavirus 咧就慢慢燜嘅，要燜、okay. 要燜好多次，要燜三次。係。咁即係如果溝針嘅話咧，就未係建議嘅係嘛？誒，暫時香港就幾少啦，但係咧， okay. 我就知道好多啲朋友誒投嗰兩針 b e y o n d t e c h 就攣低曬。咁本嚟政府唔俾佢哋打 Coronavirus， 我傻啦，你唔俾佢打。咁啊，即係我絕大部分話要發，即係話劉醫生唔好咁癲啦。咁誒，最後都俾咯，係因為我覺得。我哋搞掂第一針先啦。嚇<笑>，所以我就係覺得其實，你老誒呢個香港嘅社會，其實我哋要相信我嘅市民，我哋要將所有嘅信息講俾佢聽。誒，能夠俾到佢哋有個選擇就俾個選擇，唔好唔好咁咁咁傲慢啦。我哋叫做去講。係啊，我好快我 combine 幾個 question 啊。好啊。Related to 啊、呃，即係而家嗰個 vaccine， 咁就即係 basically 咧，而家呢個呢、這個誒，而、呃、家個 om omicron 咧係咪誒係咪 more contagious 啊、呃、？OK， 好啊。compare to 另外啲 variant 喺尤其是呢個 pediatric population 啦，咁打咗針，另外再 comment 啊，可唔可以有家長 worry about？ 即、就、係、是、想知道嗰個打咗針喺呢一個 population 有冇任何 long term implication， 同埋個 side effect profile compared to 誒、呃、如果打咗喺誒即係之前打咗喺大人嘅 population 有又有咩啲分別咧？唔該。誒得嗰度好多 composite 問題。係，就我答翻問問第一條先。頭先講啦，即係就咁個 contagiousness 喺呢個 population。哦 ，OK， 嗱 ，omicron 咧嗰個傳播率係好驚人嘅。咁有幾個原因咧
。誒，第一誒就佢係主要喺上呼吸系統度複製啦，就唔係好似之前嗰啲係下呼吸系統。咁下呼吸即係肺啦，即、就、係、是、所以 omicron 咧產生肺炎個機率咧就係少啲嘅。咁根據所有嘅文獻咧，如果相對嘅 delta 咧，你因為 omicron 要入醫院嗰個風險咧係少過 delta 一半以上，可能係剩翻三分一到嘅啫。如果係死亡嘅話咧，就可能係低到剩翻十分一，甚至乎係十二十三分之一咁樣樣。咁呢個 data 已經好紮實㗎啦，由南非講嘅，跟住美國唔係英國，跟住歐洲，誒美國，美國就差嘅，即係美國真係好差嘅，因為佢實在太過 patchy 啦啲嘢，所以個死亡率頭先啊誒嗰個 Lady 有講都係上升嘅，咁佢哋真係做得好差講真。嗱呢個第一點，咁所以呢個 Omicron 咧，佢 intrinsically 佢本質咧係比 Delta 係輕嘅。但唔係表示唔會殺傷力喎、哦，因為我哋要知道南非嗰啲咧，就係、是、已經打咗針就唔多，但係咧佢曾經俾三個 wave 洗禮過嘅嚇、啊，就當然係之前個 delta 啦，再之前嗰個 beta 啦，仲有一個原草豬啦，咁佢四雲啊撈咗四雲，咁所以一個人口成個社會要點樣咧？得兩樣嘢你可以有呢個免疫力嘅啫，一就係感染，即、就、係、是、好似南非，哇！你洗咗四次牌。即係你好似洗四次地啦，拖咗四次地，你都冇乜地方冇俾佢即係拖過㗎啦。咁有打針雖然唔多，但係即係咁樣樣，咁先至有咁樣嘅結局。咁啊英國嚟講一樣，因為咧佢而家九成五嘅人咧都已經血裏邊已經知道佢係 Ida 係打咗針，或加減有埋感染之後，先至會得出呢一個咁嘅結局。啊，似乎 Omicron 掃你一次，你好多人感染，但係真係要入醫院死嘅咧。係唔係好多？比上次冇咁多，但係都死。譬如英國誒上幾日已經有五十幾六十個人死啦。咁英國咧嘅人口係我哋嘅十倍，亦即係我哋每日有六七個人會死啦。嗱，嗰個仲係話我哋啊打針係打到好英國咁好喎，英國啲老人家打差唔多一百 percent 噶啦，睇到未啊？咁同埋佢又比之前啊洗禮過噶，咁所以你每日除除十就係等於我哋。咁佢哋講緊慢慢升，即係我哋每日有成千幾、二千、三千宗㗎。如果我哋而家就即刻與病毒共存，咁每日就死大概，哇！我十幾廿個啦，每日咁，哇！咁點算啊？咁所以而家咪好驚咯？點解不停呼籲啲人叫老人家打？而家老人家六十歲以上長五十萬未打㗎，呢排就好啲，呢排就好啲。咁所以咧就大概係咁。咁頭先有個問題咧，就係講翻話，咦？你你又話即係？誒 coronavirus 產生個抗體冇咁高，但係保護重症一樣咁好，點解？就是、個 T 細胞頭先劉醫生講咗啦，因為疫苗嗰個發展咧，喺呢咁多十年咧，淨係講抗體嘅啫。做疫苗嗰啲人，如果佢唔係免疫學家咧，對 T 細胞嘅認識唔高嘅。咁而家出現咗 covid 之後咧 ，T 細胞先受到重視，先至知道原來 T 細胞咧就係保護你唔好死亡，唔好有重症。咁。Omicron 咧逃脱呢一個抗體咧，即係而家現今嗰啲即係 pre-Omicron 嗰啲誒疫苗咧，係逃脱做即係基本上你過一兩個月就冇曬㗎啦，即係冇咗九成八成嗰啲力量。但 T 細胞佢都逃脱，但係逃脱得唔多，逃脱一至兩成，兩成到。點解咧？就因為佢變嚟變去就件衫轉咗嗱，用翻另一個比喻啦，你可以轉件衫好容易，即、就、係、是、個 spike。就係、是、你件衫啦，有紅色、綠色、橙色，乜色都有。但係呢個心啊，就個 nuclear capsule 啦，你唔可以轉得太多，你轉得太多，你已經死咗噶啦。嗯哼。而家 coronavirus 嗰個好處咧，就係佢個心喺度，個 nuclear capsule 喺度，佢同埋啲皮骨都喺度 ，membrane 同埋啲 envelope 啲皮同骨都喺度，即係你啲皮膚啊。spike 咧，你可以想象佢一件衫嚟嘅，佢梗可以轉啦，咪轉咯，咪轉到四五十。八地方係有個 mutation， 所以咧 ，omicron 嘅出現換咗件衫完全唔見樣嘅咧，就會將呢一兩隻疫苗嗰個效力咧就拉近咗好多啦。以前人哋啊睇唔起 coronavirus 嘅，而家咧就知道都唔係，原來佢裏邊啲心係幾好嘅，可以保護到佢嗰個重症同埋死亡。我希望我答到係咪？頭先有位，例如喺度啲可以俾少少資料，因為今朝早我都喺報紙睇啦，我都好小心睇報紙資料係唔係準確咧。今日新加坡公布咗佢，佢就有即系、就是、過去一年咧，八百二十幾個死亡。係啊，嗰、那個 Bloomberg 噶嘛，女醫生。最大問題咩咧？七成係冇打針
七成係冇打針。其實我哋想句話俾大家聽咧，總之打咗咧就有 protection。如果好清楚講到，如果打 Sinovac 咧，就係、是、每一十一誒 hundred thousand 咧就有十一個 case。Sinovac 咧就七點八，包括六點二。其實大家都係個個都 protect 嘅。嗱，當然佢就話法國冇 Delta 最勁咯，但係我哋香港冇得打嘅。嗱，唔係唔係，阿阿雷雨生，我再解釋一次咧，因為今日阿阿阿即係佢要係 Bloomberg 出嘅，咁嗰個咧就係個黃部長就安啊，誒安部長就係佢個衞生部長。佢其實呢個資料大概幾個星期前喺嗰個誒記者知道會講咗，但係佢最重要嗰句咧，佢呢個咧我哋叫 raw data，raw 嘅意思咧係未。未去睇下究竟打針嗰啲人嘅年齡層係點樣樣，同埋佢係幾時打針，所以咧佢將幾隻疫苗嚟比較佢個有效性咧，係好大疑惑嘅，係好多漏洞嘅，因為新加坡好似香港咁，都係啲老嘅人係會打呢個科興即係 coronavirus 或者國藥多，而打呢個 Bionta 咧就後生嘅，所以我自己深信將嗰個 age 即係個年齡層啊。做咗一個我哋喺統計學上叫做一個 confounding factor， 將佢即係考慮埋咧，分別真係唔大噶，真係唔大噶。因為喺新加坡啲老華僑咧，係渴望等打呢個 coronavirus 啊、sinovac， 誒即係同埋呢個 sinopharm 嘅，咁啊政府一路都頂住頂住，到最後頂唔順都要俾呢啲老華僑。去打嘅，咁、啊、所以咧，其實有冇？係啊，差唔多。Bloomberg、Bloomberg 咧，你佢講嗰啲嘢咧，你要睇真啲啊，<笑>真係睇真啲啊。咁甚至啲專家就咁 send 俾我個大佬爺，咁我就講翻佢哋大佬爺，你知唔知？佢 age 都未去做一個誒，即、呃、係、就是、confounding 嘅 correction， 就咁樣 send 出去。咁唔係個個都係做科研，個個都唔係做 statistics 噶嘛。咁 Bloomberg 邊個人睇嘅啫？咁你安部長？都專登講呢樣嘢，但安部長我點知佢喺國會係禮拜一講，但係呢啲數據咧係幾個星期前已經喺記者招待會講咗㗎啦。咁所以咧，不如我哋再繼續，有好多題目。但係，副生，我想誒誒誒講清楚一點就係、是、你係話，即、就、係、是、你話誒 biotech 嘅 antibody 高啲嘅，咁但係咧就 for 兩隻 vaccine prevent severe infection 嘅 percentage 其實都係差唔多，可唔可以咁講？誒呢個我估算你嘅啫 ，Anthony， 你即係。你知劉醫生好均真嘅，我有 data 就講 data， 呢個我都係估算嚟嘅，因為喺你嗰、那個嗰、那個智利，因為咧俾咗 Omicron 洗禮啦嘛，同埋咧所有嘅比較咧係唔唔妥當嘅，甚至乎我教我啲 MBBS 嘅學生咧，你將之前嘅 Phase Three Study 咁比較都唔妥當，即係譬如喺巴西做嗰個 Conovac， 佢嗰個 subject 係啲醫護人員嚟㗎，咁 Phase 係普通市民嚟嘅 community 㗎，咁所以咧。喺 Brazil 嗰個 study 咧，佢就可以睇到 coronavirus 真係可以 hundred percent 誒，即係可謂誒保護唔好死亡，或者有七八十 percent 保護呢個重症。但係嗰個保護淨係話感染咧，得五十幾個 percent 嘅咋。咁所以 Pfizer 嗰個第一個即係 pivotal study 咧，佢係冇 data on severity 或者係死亡嘅。咁但係啲人唔記得曬㗎啦。咁好在喺 real world 咧，頭先我咪俾咗 USA 嗰啲咧，佢真係可以保護到死亡重症嘅。咁啊，即係我都好心碎，因為我做曬佢嗰啲 spike T cell 係得噶嘛 ，beyond pack， 你明唔明啊？咁所以咧，我頭先講嗰啲咧，係我綜合咗我讀過咁多書，諗過咁多嘢，我自己嘅數據再俾市民睇。咁我自己嘅取態，我琴日都同林鄭所有啲局長，我哋而家最重要嘅就唔好捧一隻疫苗踩另一隻，兩隻都咁好，揀一隻你啱心水就打入去，咁啊得噶啦。好，唔好意思，我覺得比較激動啲啊，唔好意思嚇，因為我搞到都，因為大家都好擔心啲細路，大家都好擔心我哋香港啦，所以都係想揾咗路。係啊係啊，其實我見到咧，香港係 victim of the success 啊，其實香港真係做得好好。咁而我哋自己而家面對一個係其他世界咧，就唔會見到問題啦。咁我哋咪係好多疑問啊，其他嘢咁樣嚇。咁我哋最後一條問題好聰明嘅，就係係咪 Julissa？ 我唔知佢邊個啦。佢話：如果打針夠唔夠？咁第一針，你記得舊年九月幾咧？我哋見到第二針太危險啦，就停咗佢嘅。咁嗰陣時我，哎呀死啦！第一針夠唔夠？咁我我啱睇到啲數據啦，一針可以頂得上一陣嘅咋。如果奧密克係係保護唔到嘅，咁同埋佢出嗰啲誒所謂 T 細胞又好，乜都好咧。誒其實真係唔多夠嘅，到最後你都要打兩針。但係你如果你相隔咗三個月打，唔係廿一日咧，你嗰個心肌炎嘅發生率咧就可以減低到之前嘅十分一。你明唔明我意思啊？
即係二千八百個有一個咧，就估算係到二萬八千個先有一個，咁都係值得嘅，係咪？即係如果你想高啲抗體，咁但係頭先劉醫生都講咗啦，個 T 細胞先係保護嗰個死亡同埋重症，咁你揀一個你自己啱心水就得㗎啦。係 ，thank you，thank you， 劉醫生好快問一問咧，誒家長有幾個都問咧 ，about 誒即係十二歲誒啱啱細蚊仔 turn 十二歲打 adult dose， 又話因為而家又新出呢個 pediatric 嘅 lower dose， 咁究竟係咪應該 consider 埋呢個 lower dose 咧？有幾位都問呢個問題。係啊，係啊，好尷尬啊！因為舊年咧，誒，我哋誒七八九月嗰陣時發過呢個問題咧，啲人已經話點解會咁噶？中國人，因為多咁多，係咪我哋啲身材啊、體重係細過美國人？咁我諗嚟諗去應該係啩？呢個第一樣嘢啦。咁誒，第二樣嘢就誒，啲人好可能係人種啦。Who knows? I don't know。咁但係我到最終咧，都係覺得係嗰個 reporting system 咯。頭先講嗰啲係 clinical myocarditis。咁好多誒坊間嘅心臟科。同事咧都有同我聯絡嘅，佢話：，誒、哎，劉醫生啊，其實我哋成日都有見到啲大人啊，誒打完之後啲心亂咁跳啊，等等嗰啲，佢話呢啲係咪 subclinical myocarditis？ 等你有 arrhythmia， 誒等我話咁呢個有機會啦，有可能啦，因為 focal myocarditis 真係好難好難斷症嘅嚇，咁嗰啲就有陣時會引起一啲誒心律嘅失常。咁所以你話，如果你啱十二歲，係咪就要打 full dose？ 咁你梗係有啲擔心啦。咁我都講咗，我啱啱琴日先有一個打 first dose 嘅，唔知十二三歲嘅就，即係原來過唔知幾多日之後，阿關醫生好似係就就有心痛啊，咁啊入咗醫院，咁啊去咗即係某間醫院啦，唔好講邊度啦，嚇即係大概係咁樣樣。咁啲人咪哎呀，不如減 dose 啦，咁所以 Beyond Tap 咪減到三分一咯。但係佢就仍然維持廿一日嘅。咁我同啲美國朋友開會，就話我哋就話，哎，不如咁啦，你拉長少少打啦，喺美國咁。我啲美國同事講，你唔講嘢啊？我哋要快手打曬兩針，我哋已經叫做即係火燒喉啦，<笑>一定要快，唔好似你哋亞洲慢慢嚟，好似燉嘢咁，我哋唔得，我哋要炒炒起佢，咪真係你明唔明啊？咁<笑>每一個地方地區嘅 epidemiology 唔同，即係我哋嘅流行嘅性質唔同，我哋嘅體質唔同。咁所以咧就唔可以就咁齋讀書，就咁將佢搬過嚟香港唔得㗎。係，嗱，因為時間問題啦，不如我哋企圖好快 summarize 咗，我哋講咗好多嘢啦。咁亦都希望大家可以掌握到有啲、啊。我想問埋張張。好啊，不如誒啊，我哋有幾個家長就問緊，又而家喺外國係咪 develop 緊啲 omicron specific 嘅 vaccine？ 咁如果係嘅話，需唔需要等佢 develop 咗呢啲 vaccine 先至打，定係？而家就打的，我哋有嗰啲疫先啦。我我谂你唔好等啦，吓等就叫嘢。到时 update 咗啦，多嘅第一样嘢。咁咧，我哋香港第二边第二只变种啦，系嘛？嗱，嗰个 omicron 咧，其实大家有个咁嘅睇法嘅，因为佢比较诶温和啲啦。虽然佢传播力好高，咁你点样使到更加温和咧？就是、你自己打咗打咗疫苗。打第一代嘅疫苗就已經得㗎啦，已經係證明咗一百次、一萬次、一千次，哇！都八百萬聲㗎啦，即係全世界嗰個經驗。即係如果你要再等嗰個咧，就係、是、傻嘅。我自己覺得你可以等。嗱 ，Pfizer 咧就話會做㗎啦，到年中。咁國藥咧，我琴日開會都聽到，好似佢已經向揾國家申請緊做啲 Phase One、Two 嗰啲誒咁樣，又係到年中就會有啦。我自己嘅主張咧，如果 Omicron 真係最後一個變種株。使到我哋人類可以走出呢個大流行，就係唔好再打 Omicron 嗰啲啦。你希望 Omicron 同我哋長存啦嚇。如果到最後，我哋佢嘅死亡率，我哋睇到唔係之前咧就兩百個死一個嘅嚇，嗰、那個原草株我有任何抵抗力都冇。而家經過成年兩年嘅折騰咧，你一係就死咗，一係就有感染，一係就好翻，一係就打咗針。嗰、那個死亡率咧喺新加坡咧，而家大概一千個咧，係大概一至兩個到。咁新加坡當然同香港接近啦，都係好多冇感染。但係新加坡你記得舊年年中咧，佢就與病毒共存，所以就俾 Delta 洗咗一次地啦，我哋叫做。咁佢而家個死亡率，我琴日再睇翻咧，就大概係一千個有一至兩個到。但係其實都唔夠低嘅，我希望佢一千個唔好多過一個，喺都可能係半個到啊。但係佢而家嘅病毒共存咧，係同 Omicron， 所以佢佢佢佢琴日嗰個病例咧，已經係衝到三千。咁安部長啊，同埋其實呢個部長冇一兩個月就出嚟講嘅，咁啲 data 日日都有嘅新加坡。
咁佢就預計到春節嗰陣時會衝到去，唔知啊，佢先估計最差情況可能四千宗、五千宗，但係咧佢個醫療系統頂得順嘅，因為頭先都講咗啦，佢俾 Delta 冇咁強勁啦，咁同埋佢又俾 Delta 使咗一次禮啦，咁所以咧佢就覺得佢頂得順，佢就俾 Omicron 再俾多一次佢哋嗰個人口多一層保護，所以 Omicron 咧其實係上天賜俾我哋嘅某一種程度免費嘅 vaccine， 可以咁樣睇。<笑>咁但係當然啦，哇！你咁都得劉宇龍，唔係？如果你打曬兩針三針，你基本上係咁。你最擔心嘅咧就是老同埋弱嘅、嗯、，right？ 老嘅咧就係尤其是老人院嗰啲，大概有幾萬個老人家打到都冇一成啊！喺啲老人院或者嗰啲傷殘嗰啲，真係好多人驚㗎。咁學校咧就誒衞生即係誒誒教育局已經講到，你打七成就可以免受課程，但係嗰個吸引力唔係太高啦。但我聽到個消息就係你冇打針就唔好翻學啦，即、就、係、是、大概係咁，你就 zoom 啦。係<笑>啊，咪呢、這個就疫苗疫苗護照、疫苗通行證或者疫苗氣泡嗰個諗法啦。誒，政府應該就會出爐噶啦，呢啲嘢我覺得係啊。咁所以冇辦法啦，因為香港折騰咗咁多年，即係唔係咁多年啦，兩年。如果再係咁樣打法，都唔知打到天光都未打到老人家、細路仔。咁即係我諗，即係要走出呢個疫症，一定要大家齊心去打啦。有位誒誒、呃、叫做 Alice Wong 好聰明嘅，又講話係咪呢個 species going to vanish 啊等等。其實我就覺得，如果 Omicron 有一個 Omicron version two 又再柔弱啲，又感染快啲，咁咪俾佢咯嚇。即係大概係咁啦嚇。正常咧 ，virus 係會 mutate。冇咁強勁嘅，呢、这個係誒嗱，有人咁講啦，但係冇人保證到㗎。我都講過堂書、啊，我希望 Omicron 咧就。我覺得佢太 clever 啦。係啦，咁但係佢<笑>我諗佢唔會用順攤。唔係唔係，佢整死曬我哋又冇乜好處嘅，因為整死咗佢都死，因為 virus 就要靠生命體去複製佢㗎嘛。係啊。但係呢個 Bonita Lam 咪聰明到暈啦，佢話點解個 dose 唔係用 weight， 用 age？ 因為咧所有嘅藥都係用個 dose， 係用個 weight 㗎嘛。所以你啲家長勁聰明啦，我叫做係啊，但係冇辦法啦，因為如果你個個都要稱完之後先睇打，幾多即係、就是、打到都唔知幾時先。如果零點零零三秒嘅打唔到啦。誒<笑>，真係。But anyway， 好啦，我哋真係真係時間問題啦，我哋好多好多問題問唔完嘅，咁我哋可能會有咗途徑俾大家繼續喺 internal 去問啲題目啦。啊，咁就容許我即係、就是、maybe 我都唔夠膽話可以 summarize 頭先我哋講咁多嘢啦。頭先我 set 咗條題目俾誒劉教授就話點解要打？我諗相信佢講到俾俾大家聽好清楚嘅啦。咁問題就係打邊只？咁頭先佢哋都解釋咗，香港得兩種揀啫。咁大家可以睇啊，高風險誒低回報、低風險高回報啊，定係點？大家真係知道之後咧，只可以決定啦。咁幾時打咧？依、這個就係大家可能猶豫地方啦。係天日咧，後日啊，再等啲。我諗依個可能大家嘅判斷啦。咁邊個應該打呢？頭先我相信劉教授都講，大部分人已經係可以打嘅，其實冇咩嘢係未必係。如果有疑問，你可以再問一問咯。喺邊度打？頭先啊，菲律誒 Miss Low 都係講咗少少啦。咁我哋睇大家家長嘅傾向係點，係咪方便大家喺學校去做到呢？如果學校去做到，我哋舊生會 Medical Chamber 會唔會係支援你哋呢？咁我哋會到時候可以睇一睇依個 option 嘅。咁當然唔使出去街牌咧，就會係好好啦。咁我哋一定會照顧我哋自己兄弟嘅。咁我哋到時睇睇點做。咁敲咧，仲頭先講過啦，仲有好多細苗嘅嘢打大比啊，定其他嘢咁樣。咩？劉教授有冇 interpret 嗰啲就講唔多嘢啊？我都好新。係啦，總之你啲家長都好聰明嘅，佢啲問題真係即係已經反映到佢哋即係諗咗好多嘢㗎啦。咁有啲家長譬如 Sharon 咁啊，喂，我問咗我個仔十二歲喎，究竟打副刀食啊，分身刀，我都講唔到俾你聽啊，係咯。咁就如果係好恩好瘦嘅，你我打温信都算啦。即係如果你真係想揀 Beyond Tech， 我諗啊，我諗啊，因為呢個簡直有啲荒謬。點解啱啱過一日之後就打 Full Dose， 一日之前就話 Full Dose？ 所以我話你啲家長勁聰明就係咁解咯。所以如果我哋叫誒，我想睇一睇咧，劉教授好想大家咧之後，我咧會俾個網址你哋咧入翻去。作為今日聽完之後嘅再一次誒做一個 survey， 睇你哋呢個成鋪嘢嘅，咁、哦、我哋介介紹啲 survey 好唔好啊？我盡量幫你幫你手。好啊，拜託嗰二百幾位家長啊，因為劉醫生咧就不停喺度講打疫苗，咁我而家咧就做緊一個小學生嗰啲 survey 啊，睇下佢哋究竟幾多想打誒、呃？如果打誒中意打邊一隻？咁如果唔打，佢嘅憂慮係啲咩嘢？
。咁你誒之前未聽，我之前可能都做咗嗰個 survey。咁希望你聽完之後，誒聽日誒你又再做。咁啊，我睇下我會唔會再講得更加明白啲啦。因為有你可以就咁打話，哇，劉醫生你講得太艱辛啦，或者之類啲。咁我睇下我有冇。有冇用去使到唔想打啲人都哎呀，我都去打啦咁樣，即係大概。如果我麻煩阿 Samson 再一次傳嗰個 link 俾大家咧，就大家幫幫手，因為我哋學學者咧係好重要呢啲咧，即係評估翻我哋講嘢係咪收唔收到定係接受。唔係誒，做咗最緊要咧，阿阿德克雷啊，我就會同全香港講佢哋嘅憂慮咩，我就會再用我嘅方法同佢哋適宜又好咩都，我會講翻俾政府。聽誒，你譬如我哋夾 coronavirus 有，因為我而家有一個好細嘅標本量，大概有二百幾個學生家長，大概六成係想打嘅。咁、那個想打嘅咧，大半就係想打呢個科興嘅。Okay. 好啊。因為都講話到校嘅咧，就打科興嘅，即係冇得打呢個 Beyond Tech 嘅。係係。即係大概係咁樣樣。好。好。不如 Simon 你作最後總結，或者多謝。我我想加，我想 add 多個 note 就係，首先 obviously 多謝劉教授啦。咁誒誒。呃呃我佢出個即係當 Samson 幫我哋去 pass 嗰個 survey 嘅時候咧，因為我哋都 capture 曬頭先誒所有家長嘅嘅問題，所以好抱歉頭先時間唔夠咧，答唔曬咧，我哋都盡量 pass 翻俾阿劉教授去俾誒 brief comments to all those questions when we send it out to parents。咁冇嘅，即係最最我都係 echo 啊 Dr. Lu 啊啊。啊、uh, ，Dr. Anthony 啊，就係 basically 係 ，you know， 即係唔好等啊，即係 basically，I think the safety data is very compelling， 同埋咧，誒，同埋 basically 咧，兩個到頭來咧都 very effective， 咁所以咧，誒、uh, ，thank you 學校 provide 啊、uh, 平台，令到啲家長可以快啲可以誒、uh, protect our children。So thank you。好啊。另外誒、uh, ，Professor Lau 誒、uh, ，如果你個 talk 嘅 PDF 我哋可唔可以 share 出去啊？同埋如果我哋嘅 recording 誒、uh, 可唔可以喺一個公 social platform 咁樣誒攞出嚟？冇問題啊，你。即係你，我好多人都即係即係我都冇問題嘅嚇，因為嗰啲都係公開嘅資料。咁劉醫生，我諗大部分人都知我嗰個取態係咩，又要要公開啦，要透明啦，要將資訊誒廣為傳播啦。咁所以你讀我嗰啲 slide， 我諗我諗我諗我諗，或者 Miss Low close in remark 啊，係啦，嗯。啊、uh, ，咁我就再次多謝劉醫生啦，同埋 Dr. Lloyd、uh,、Simon、uh,、Dr. Teo。咁啊，其實 within 好短嘅時間，我哋可以做到呢一個嘅嘅 webinar 或者係 Zoom meeting 啦。咁啊，將一個即係咁樣嘅平台，等嘅家長可以真係有你嘅 concern， 可以即係直接問啲專家，呢、這個係最好噶啦。咁當然即係我哋就係即係有好大嘅支援，就係、是、因為我哋有誒、uh, DSOB 呢個 medical chapter， 有好多嘅醫生嘅 O boys， 咁啊可以真係有第一時間有啲咩嘢我哋係需要 support 嘅呢一班嘅 O boys 醫生就係我哋即係好好嘅後盾啦。咁啊，其實有啲咩嘢我哋就會第一時間再同家長聯絡啦，同 PT 緊密聯絡啦。咁多謝家長你今日嗰個嘅支持，嗰、那個嘅參與啦，多謝多謝。O、okay, K， 好多谢，好多谢，多谢，多谢啊，各位啊，有机会我哋可以有一日，一日就可以饮下茶，食下茶。嘅家长，祝丽莎，身体健康，新年快乐，大家。好 ，Anthony， 好，哎，最紧要健康，嗯 ，O K。系，身体健康。多谢，多谢。拜拜。O K， 拜拜。拜拜。拜拜，拜拜。Thank you， 拜。我哋可以 capture 翻一题目。